Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Now before you say it, I know it's been a long time. But in a professional capacity, I've been exceptionally busy from probably December last year. So when I've had downtime from work, it's had to be downtime to sort of give me that work home life balance. Now I've been out, I've been out with fishing rods, I've been out shooting. I just took it a bit easier. I did take camera for a few months. But thankfully, things have started to steady off at work. And I'm back out there. Uh, my free time is my free time again. So I'm enjoying myself. I'm getting out there. I'm enjoying doing what I'm doing. And now it's time to start making some videos again. So I'm out after wood pigeons on a summer's morning. Uh, them stock doves arrived. Obviously, they're off limits for obvious reasons. And these three corvids dropped into water trough. But they saw that little movement of mine there, just so we're poking moderator out at eyed. And I blew that chance, really. But it weren't much longer, and I get another opportunity. And you'll notice I'm in a new eyed today. I bought a, they say it's a three man pop up eyed, but really it's, uh, it's fit for purpose for two people. And a little bit more on that later. I've seen this wood pigeon. It's dropped in. That's pick my moment. I was tracking it for a few minutes actually. And I was concerned about them thistles and nettles. But I kept having a look. I got a clear path through. And thankfully that's first wood pigeon in bag. You can see this hide. And it is from inside. As you can see, plenty spacious. It's enough for two people, easily, shooting out the same... Or shooting in the same direction, should I say. Beauty about it is it's got plenty of windows. And it's got little side slit windows as well. Where you can, like, set your camcorder up and stuff like that. Now, there are plenty of wood pigeons in the area. We're landing all over the field that we're targeting. These three, quite far in distance, well out of range of a shot. I just filmed them for a while, observed the behaviour. And as always, it's about being patient and waiting for your next opportunities. Now, even though I'm in an hide, I like some form of full concealment. So I've still got my hat on, I've still got my snud, just to hide that paleness of your face. And this next visitor is a bit of a strange one at the beginning. It's all I could see with its head. Now I know this stock doves in area. So I weren't prepared to take a shot at this point because I couldn't identify what it were. Here's another one. Again, it's slightly obscured by them thistles. That looked like a stock dove where it took off. So that's just making me think this one's a stock dove as well. I'm prepared to wait. I'm going to let it show me the rest of its body so I can identify it properly. Still waiting. You know what it's like. You know, you've got to be patient. Don't take shots at what you can't identify. Last thing you want to do is fall foul at law. Be a nice headshot if it presents itself. I'm just going to get myself comfy, just a little bit of a readjustment there. Now it looks like a young wood pigeon. That other bird comes along, shows itself, take that clean. As you can see, one that I originally looking at flies off into distance, but that is a wood pigeon. You can quite clearly see them white wing bars. Well, pleased with that. Pleased that I waited. And it paid off in end. And that's water trough I'm targeting. You can see me eye just behind that fence line there. And what I do is I set camcorder up and I'll sit back in my chair and I use it as like a, a viewing screen. 
Sometimes you have to be really quick with opportunities. I've got camcorder set up. Just flicked ATN on. Trying to get adjustment to get comfy. And that wood pigeon were off. That'll teach me. Try and be quicker. But when you're filming, you do miss some opportunities. That's part and parcel of buy off really. And if you wanted to record your hunts and share them on social media, then you have to be pre prepared to sort of realise you're going to miss some opportunities. Thankfully, went too much longer. And another one presents itself. Let it have a drink. Let it settle. Let that shot go. Nice shot, straight to basic neck. That'll have broke his uh, spinal cord. That'll be an instant death, but that's what we're after. You now we don't want these critters to suffer. We want to take them humanely and cleanly. Then there's no stress imparted into meat, which is byproduct of pest control service. Then when you do get around to cooking these up, they're a lot tastier if you can take clean kills. I'll just take this opportunity, get a little bit closer look at this new hide that I'm using. Really impressed with it. Like I say, it's big enough for two people. It's got like an umbrella system, so you just pop top art, then you pop sides art. And then you can just pop it back in from top, then round to the sides to put it away. And it literally does take a few minutes to sort of get ready and then take down. I think it was 60 quid on eBay. Now you've seen these shots before, but this is filmed with camcorder, so I just want to run you through them. That with that one where I thought originally it was a stock dove. And then the second one comes along, presents itself and gets took out. There's one of the other wood pigeons. I think this is the last shot I saw show you before the other one. It's nice to get that footage when they actually fly into the trough. So I've generally got camcorder running. I'm scanning area. And I'm hoping to press record before they land on trough and uh, get some different footage for you. At this point, I've got one... Uh, Taking a bath in water trough, I've got one laid at the side. I knew that I'd have a maybe presented funny, so I wanted to go and collect them. Want area to look as natural as possible, and I don't want to break cover too often either, because you just you spook in area. Any birds in local vicinity are going to fly off, but sometimes that can work to your advantage. Now you spook them. They recirculate, fresh birds come into the area, they're unaware of danger. Uh, generally, you probably have to wait 10, 15, 20 minutes for the area to settle again. But what I decided to do with a couple of these shot birds were lay them out as decoys. So I've got this one with its head up, like it's on alert, and the other one with its head down, like it was feeding. That bird stock sort of coming into the local area again. Again, these two are a little bit far in distance, but at least they're sort of settling and coming back. A lot of birds in the area on this particular morning, so I thought them decoys would work. And they do work a little bit later in session. It draws a few extra birds uh, onto the ground and a bit closer to the trough. What they're looking for when they fly above is them white wing bars and neck bars once they see them prominently uh, sort of standing out it'll give confidence to come in and makes them visible to birds that are flying over very similar shot to last time i had cleared some of these nettles and thistles closer to hide to give me a clear view uh, but this one's been a bit of a pain in my arse if i'm being honest with you so i do go out and i do snap them back just to sort of stock up any deflections uh, when I do get opportunity to a shot. It's nice to sit in this side, really spacious. Only thing I'm missing, which I 
you tend to create with your natural lights uh, is little shelvings because I'm usually making them out of pallets, so I've got little shelves to sort of put my coffee on and things like that. Rest my phone and all that good stuff. I'm sort of missing that a little bit, uh, but I'm sure I can come up with something where I can just quickly uh, throw some up in here, and I can I've got some way to just uh, put things on off at floor. On this morning, cows went for milking. I think it was about half past six they were off, and then I don't know half past nine ish, ten o'clock they're back out into the fields. First things first. Looks like they're thirsty. Want to get a drink down them. It takes them about 10-15 minutes for flock to sort of clear off, or urge, should I say, clear off from around water trough. But when they do, I get my opportunities back. And you can see my two decoys, and then you can see this live one. So decoys are working. It's just on this occasion, I didn't get an opportunity at that one. Decoys brought this bird in. Landed a little bit farther than what I'd normally like to take a shot, but with pretty good conditions. A little breeze, only about four or five mile an hour. But after I took this shot, I ranged it with MV200 binoculars. You know, 56.2 yards, something like that. So I was really chuffed with that. And that gave me some uh, additional confidence that morning, actually. And there were a couple other shots at a very similar range that I managed to take. Here's another one. Similar range. Same outcome. And that bird takes off. But you'll see. Flies more, probably, what, 10, 15 yards to the left. Has a little bit of flap around. Again, it's a, a neck shot. I aim for Ed knowing that pellet had dropped. It's still at like a vital area. Uh, it'd give me probably two or three inches of forgiveness, if I'm being honest. But that's what you want to do. Neck, head. It's going to be a kill shot. You can see I'm proud of my eye. Keep showing it. So I'm set up inside, shooting bike. Took my trigger sticks, didn't need them. And that's what my view looks like. Now this was a quick double after that other one. You can see it's still flapping a little bit there. It does come to rest in a second or two. Another long distance one. I didn't range this, but I'm tipping it with about 50, 50 something yards again. And you can see, just hits it at base at neck. So it drops a couple of inches. That's another two inch bag. I'm really happy with that. Uh, three long range shots to sort of bring this session to a close. Again, it's good to get back out. It's good to be making content again. I'll aim to you know, upload like I did before. If I'm out every week, it'll be once a week or at minimum every two weeks. And this was sunrise first thing in the morning. And it's just a reminder that you know this is why I'm out there. This is what I enjoy. And reality is, it is my reset and it takes my stresses away. Here's some footage from previous sessions I ain't shown before. And that's a wood pigeon. Then I write with a mate, Matt. Uh, we had a, an evening on rabbits. I think Matt got three or four, I got three. Again, these are long range shots. You're talking 50 to 60 yards. And there were only three quarter grown rabbits as well, so slightly smaller target. Then through summer months, obviously, a few rats around bottom of my bird feeder. I just keep on top of these. This is a load of youngsters that turned up. Once I see them, they generally only last a couple of days until I catch up with them. So it never gets to a point 
uh, get an infestation. They don't just get they don't get chance to sort of live that long. Some of the same they're gone. It's like anything really, you know. You have bird feeders on your garden. You feed wildlife. You're gonna attract rats. It's just uh, you can't really help it. And that was a decent sized one actually. Is a shot I'm um, sort of pleased of. I could see its head. Again, see them back legs kick in. It's a good night for that rabbit. A good session. Pleased to get out. Get these in freezer. I thought I'd miss that one. But there are actually two rabbits. You can see I'm just trying to get ready to uh, get a second opportunity at that other rabbit. And then that one gets twitchy. And you'll see the first one start dancing about and flipping about. That one went two or three yards, come to stop where crosshairs are. So good session. Good to be out with Matt. Catch up with him. He's a good old mate of mine. And here's some old footage that I found. Uh, camcorder footage from one of my feeders. To the uh, grey squirrel from winter. As usual, twitchy little bugger. Roundabout feeder, up and down tree. But eventually it goes on to feed it. Won't be long until we're back onto Grey Menace. Well, October time. We're coming to end of August now. I originally thought it were up. Now it's coming back down. And this is camcorder footage that I found. Obviously, I'll go through camcorder from uh, other day's session. And like I say, I just found this one there. Not being deleted previously. So I thought I'd just include it in this video. Promise of things to come. Perfect timing. Perfect shot. I'm going to run three feeders this year. Uh, you've seen me one. My recent one. Uh, I have took that old eye down. And I've uh, sort of rebuilt like a structure where my new pop up hide's going to go in between. I'll just take it up and down as I need it. This one's my me, uh, me shed hide in woods, this feeder. So I'll be running that. And then we're running a third one as well, trying to max maximise them opportunities on greys uh, this winter. And get plenty of decent footage and plenty of decent meat for the freezer as well. So this is the same shot, just in slow motion. And I've zoomed in a little bit for you. So I hope you like this video. If you can do me a favour, watch it two or three times. Share it a few times if you can on social media for me. Just get that algorithm back up on YouTube so it gets my views back up. Because I've been inactive for a while. My views will dip and uh, YouTube won't promote my videos as well as what they have done in the past. So I'd appreciate your support with that. Just watch it two or three times for me. You don't have to watch the whole video. Just watch it for a minute at a time. Just boost my views. Give me a chance for YouTube again. And thanks for watching. Thanks for the support. I'll see you next one.